So, expressive dynamics. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to lead students to experiment with different crescendos and decrescendos throughout the bow. An example, this could be one long crescendo on an up bow, or a decrescendo and then a crescendo on a down bow. Now, more sound is usually associated with more weight, but there's a huge variance in uh, weight and sound between the frog and the tip of the bow. Tip of the bow, to get a true fortissimo, would require quite a bit of weight. To get that same fortissimo, it would require less weight at the frog, and this exercise requires you to be aware of that. So, if we were going to do one long crescendo on a down bow, we'd want to start with not very much weight with the frog and increase that drastically as we get towards the tip. So let's do this on the low E string. Okay, so let's do that same thing but on an up bow. So we would want to start with more weight at the tip now than we did at the frog for the down bow. So. Now it is quite a bit easier um, just because crescendoing towards the tip uh, does require, like I said, a drastic amount of um, pressure and weight as you get towards the tip. So, uh, the opposite would go for a decrescendo. So, uh, for a decrescendo, we would want to start um, with a good amount of pressure at the frog, not too much, and decrease that pressure as we get towards the tip. Now, this can be a down bow, of course, on a low E. Let's try that for an up bow. So that would mean that we would need to apply quite a bit of pressure to start off and decrease that pressure drastically just because the frog require, doesn't require very much weight to produce a lot of sound. So. Expressive dynamics.